In 1949, Oleg, or Olga as she now calls herself, uh, ended up in an orphanage. Perhaps uh, he, she was the child of a Latvian couple that was deported to Siberia that year. Her adoptive mother arrived at the orphanage and simply said, I'll take the first child that you present to me, and that is how Oleg found a new home. His stepfather didn't like him. It seems that even to this day, nobody really likes Olga once Oleg. And so she, living in the identity of a woman, now lives alone and just has her guinea pig for company. My mom means the Naksqua, Naksqua. No, 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 Trans person is the story of the life of a transsexual who grew up in the Soviet Union and now lives in supposedly free and democratic Latvia, but uh, encounters many obstacles and problems in everyday life. This is going to be a look back at Oleg or Olga's life. When Oleg was a little boy, the big event in the life of a Soviet child was induction into the Red October Children's Organization. But for Oleg, this had a very special meaning. He spent the ceremony admiring the dresses of the girls in his class and wishing that he could wear one as well. While other children in the Soviet school system were given special awards for their good grades, Oleg was held back in almost every primary school class and as a result only finished four grades in school. He was a troubled child and was eventually sent to a special camp for juvenile delinquents. Along with other probably learning disabled and uh, troubled children, Oleg uh, worked outdoors and eventually learned a trade. When Oleg did find a job, uh, he was required to go to evening school to try to improve his level of education, but he didn't do so well. It seems that he skipped a lot of his evening classes and that resulted in him being brought before a uh, communist youth uh, work collective tribunal where he was reprimanded and urged to improve his attendance and his grades at the evening school. Like all young uh, male Soviet citizens, Oleg was drafted into the army and assigned to a mess hall unit where uh, soldiers were served uh, meals during the day. But for Oleg, the real pleasure of working in this military unit came at night when the mess hall was closed and he could open the lockers of the female staff, put on a dress, and spend the night sweeping the floor. After serving in the Soviet army, Oleg returned to civilian life and met a rather strange young woman in a park who said that she was immediately ready to go home with him and to uh, be his partner. Uh, she just had to go around the house three times to make sure that the monkeys that were sitting on the roof were gone. In any event, uh, Oleg decided that this perhaps was the woman he wanted to marry, so he infiltrated a uh, mass Soviet wedding that was a tradition at the time and married.
And so Oleg joined the labor force and tried to become a hero of Soviet labor. This film will show Oleg's life in a particular hybrid manner, combining documentary and archival footage, work by an actor portraying Oleg as a young person, and they look at Oleg's life today when he lives as Olga in a female identity.